Hello everyone, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am your mentor and coach Mohit Sharma. I have received a lot of requests that you want me to train you on some of the lean tools and concepts. So today I bring you a lean training. In this training we will talk about what is lean, what is a value added activity or a non-value added activity, what are lean principles and what are some basic lean tools. Then I will talk about a four step lean methodology. So with the help of this lean methodology, you will be able to identify all the problems in the process. You will be able to identify a real root cause to the problem and then a solution to that particular root cause and the problem. After implementing, there is a control mechanism that you need to follow so that the problem doesn't surface back again. So these are the four step lean methodology that I am going to talk about in this video. So before we move ahead, so we need to understand what is lean philosophy. It is a principle driven tool based philosophy that focuses on eliminating waste. So in most of the places you would have heard that lean is elimination of waste. It is not only elimination of waste, it has to be driven through some lean principles and there are certain basic tools which can help us eliminate these wastes. The most important thing in any lean philosophy or any lean definition is that we should understand that all these activities or steps, they should add value from the customer's perspective. It is very important to understand the customer's perspective. So what do you mean by customer perspective? Let us take an example to understand this better. The customer has asked you to create a table which has a length of one meter, but you saw that there is a wood which I have, the length of the wood was 1.5 meters. And you thought that I will give a bigger table to my customer and the customer would be very happy. So you created a table with 1.5 meter of length and you sent the table to customer's house. In the anticipation that customer would be very happy with you and he would be your loyal customer going forward. The customer called you back and said the space that he had in his house is only 1 meter in length. So he needed a table with 1 meter length, not 1.5 meter length. You thinking that giving extra the customer would make him happy, but it was customer dissatisfaction that you get with that extra that you have given it to the customer. So the table comes back to the shop, you repair it back, that is the rework cost which is not being paid by the customer and you sent it back to him and the customer then accepts the table. So the entire story or the example tells you, we need to understand what the customer want and then we should deliver what he wants. So moving on to the next slide, you need to understand this concept of what is value added activity and what is a non-value added activity. Any activity or step that is bringing a change in the shape or form of the product is a value added activity. If it is not bringing any change in the shape or the form of a product, it is not a value added activity. This activity should be done right in the first time and customer should be ready to pay for it these three criteria should be met before we call any activity as a value added activity. Say for example, for creating that table, you had a workshop at the ground floor, but you store the woods at fourth floor. So you get the material from fourth floor to ground floor is a non value added activity because it is not changing the shape or the form of the product. So once you get the wood on the ground floor, then you start marking the wood, cutting the wood, nailing the wood, all of these are value added activities. In the previous example, when I said it should be done right at the first time, you had to get the table back to the workshop and repair it again. That is a rework that you have done. So it is not a value added activity or a step and the customer should be ready to pay for it. Customer should be ready to pay for it means the activity or the step, if it is adding value, if it is done right in the first time, but the customer is not ready to pay for that. So it is not a value added activity or step. In most of the transaction based processes, the quality check is something which the customer is not ready to pay for. They want their products or they want their transactions to be done correctly in the first go itself. So they will not pay you for your quality team. So in that case, it becomes a non value added activity or a step. The important thing to note here is that not all the times non value added activities or steps, they are not necessary. It means some are essential non value added activities. They are called enablers. For example, QC check, which the example which I gave you was an enabler. It is not purely a non value added activity or a step. So which cannot be eliminated altogether. It can be reduced, 
it can be eliminated if we have automation implemented in the process everything done correctly in the first go but most of the times enablers are something which are left behind intentionally so that they enable our process to be more smooth and fast next in the lean training we'll talk about lean principles so there are five lean principles the first one says specify the value we need to specify the value from customer's perspective that we have already spoken of second is map the value stream so you need to identify the end to end value stream map and say which step is a value added step which value which step is not a value added step and then try and remove these non value added steps the third step is establish the flow you need to establish the correct flow in the process in the example of this table where the wood is being cut the nailing department should be the next department the next department to the nailing department should be polishing department then we need to put the sunmica the next department should be a sunmica fixing department and the last department is the qc department quality check and you check everything and pack the product and the last one is the shipping department so they should be in the established flow they should not be haywire so that it takes lesser time for the product to move from one department to other the next lean principle is implementing pull so what is implementing pull nothing is done by the upstream process until the downstream customer signals the need so that is implementing the pull so you do not produce when it is not needed the last principle says work towards perfection it is the complete elimination of waste so all activities create value for the customer this is the lean toolkit so the level 1 and level 2 tools the first level of tools is to expose the waste and these tools are muda 5s mistake proofing visual management fish bone and single piece flow and the second level tools are to reduce the variability and to increase the control on the process these tools are standard work introduction to continuous flow intro to pull production and value stream mapping so in this lean basic lean training we will talk about level 1 tools only the first tool is muda which is these eight ways so i have a separate video on this particular concept i will attach the link in the description box you can watch this video in detail but just to tell you these are the eight kind of ways which exist in the process and the acronym to remember them is downtime so these eight ways are extra processing waiting transportation non utilization of resources inventory human motion overproduction and defects the next tool is called 5s so this tool is was developed in japan the 5s is a culture of orderliness that underlines great efficiency the first step is called sort simplify sweep or shine fourth is standardize and fifth one is sustain 5s enables anyone to distinguish between the normal and abnormal conditions at a glance so if you have implemented 5s it means you are working in a better workplace which will take lesser time to process things so i also have a separate video on 5s i will attach the link in the description box below for your reference there is a 5s mantra the 5s mantra says place for everything and everything in its place i generally ask people to do one small exercise so you get 20 seconds to find out number 1 to 49 in their order you will not be able to find out more than 10 numbers now the things are sorted anything which is not needed has been removed from this data set which is from 50 to 90 now you will be able to find out up to 15 in this particular number data set the second step we have to set them in order what we have done is there is a logical arrangement which was done and one is placed in the bottom left box then two is above that box three is above that box and things like that so one is placed here then two in the upper box three in the upper box now people are able to identify up to 20 with this kind of implementation the third step is to shine it means let us assume that we have cleaned our racks to keep these numbers and the fourth step is to standardize so let us follow the standard process and create a rack for each number and this is how they are kept so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10. now the team will not take more than 5 seconds to identify all these numbers from 1 to 49 with the help of 5s implementation we are able to identify these numbers from 1 to 49 
within five seconds earlier we were not able to even identify them in one minute's time frame now let us also understand there is another benefit of 5s so if there are two numbers missing can you identify those two numbers in five seconds from this particular data set i would say that you will not be able to and if you look at this one you will be able to identify number 18 and 42 are missing the implementation of 5s has really helped the team to save time let us move to the next lean tool which is mistake proofing there are two types of mistake proofing one is called prevention and the other one is called detection in prevention type of mistake proofing defects are prevented and in the detection type of mistake proofing you detect them before they are delivered to the end customer i also have a separate video for this particular tool i'll attach the link in the description box for your reference the example of prevention type of mistake proofing are there is a web form in which you have marked some field as with a star sign those fields were very important and you need all of them that is why you mark those fields as important people will not be able to submit their web forms without filling up that information on that form for example a telephone number and if you marking that number as star making that field as a mandatory field people will not be able to submit that form. There will not be a mistake of half filled form or form filled with incomplete information. So that is preventive type of mistake proofing. And detection type of mistake proofing would be a fire detector. They will detect the fire once the fire is there. The next tool is called visual management. So visual management is the practice of making all standards, targets and actual conditions highly visible in the workplace. So there are so many examples of visual management around us. For example, the fuel indicator in the car, the signboards, right? So these are all the examples of visual management. How it is implemented in our processes like visual dashboard that we have, the dialers in the call center are the examples of visual management. The next tool is called fishbone diagram. Fishbone is an important tool which helps us identify many possible causes of an effect or a problem. It can be used to structure our brainstorming session. It immediately sorts ideas into useful categories. So there are three types of brainstorming techniques that can be used. The first one is called chit method, random technique and round robin method. And the six heads of the fish are people, material, environment, machine, method and measurement. The effect is kept as the head of the fish, which is the problem which we are trying to solve. And the causes which we identify in the brainstorming session are classified in these six categories. I have separate video on this fishbone diagram as well. I will attach the link in the description box for your reference. The next tool is called Pareto chart. A Pareto chart is a type of chart that contains both bar and the line graphs where individual values are represented in descending order by bars and the cumulative total is represented by the line. It works on a Pareto principle which is called 80-20 rule. So Pareto principle states that for many events roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. So if you identify these 20% of the causes you will be able to create an impact of 80% in the process. For Pareto diagram I have so many separate videos on them. I will attach the link in the description box for further reference. Now we come to the four step problem solving approach. First step is to identify the problem. Second step is to identify the root cause of the problem. Third is to identify the solution of the problem. And fourth is to implement the solution and control the results. So we will learn this with the help of a case study. There is one of the leading electricity company in India. While generating electricity bills, they were missing the service level agreements on quality for the last six months. It means that the quality of the bills which they were producing, they were not as per the standard or as per the customer requirement. They collected data and it was observed that the defect rate of the process was 13% against a target of 2%. This was leading to a lot of rework and the SLA misses. This was causing a wrong bill generation and delaying the payment by the end customers. And for that a team was created. Team created a project charter in which they defined the business case, the problem, the goal, the milestones, the team charter and the scope of the project. The goal of the project was to reduce the error rate from 13% to 2% by December 20. Then the team did the brainstorming session to identify the root causes. This is the second step of four step lean methodology. Team did a brainstorming session to identify the root cause to the problem. The head of the fish was high defect rate. 
there were so many reasons they were missing process documents complex meter reading process staff was not trained properly there was less staff legacy systems old versions of the software being used reading from slums are difficult to take and reading issues during the rains were some of the causes to this problem they identified the causes of the problem with the help of a pareto chart they said incorrect billing address wrong meter reading and bill sent twice are the top 3 errors which contribute to 84% of the overall error types the next step was to identify the solution to these particular root causes so they did yy analysis incorrect billing address was the cause why it was the problem because it was typed incorrectly by the staff why because it was a careless mistake the root cause was no targets on accuracy was there for the team and the solution was to set targets on the sla and performance incentives are linked to the accuracy of the team members the second one was the wrong meter reading the field staff was not trained properly why they were too main further causes one was the lack of trainer the root cause was there was no backup trainers and the solution to this was to create backup trainers the second answer to this particular why which is field staff not trained properly was no proper training plan and when they had no proper training plan the root cause was there was no training module which was there so the solution was to create a training plan and create a module on how to take readings so these were the solutions which were identified in step 4 implementing the solution and controlling the result so there was a control plan that was created set billing teams target when 22nd of november where in the contract and the sla document who will do that manager and how aligning the target with the slas who should check this the general manager should check it and the frequency of check was on 26th of november creating a training plan by 22nd november in the shared drive by the training manager and how it has to be done creating a process flow and take screenshots of the relevant screens and create training documents so that is how it should be done whether this is done or not should be checked by general manager by 26th of november so this is how the control will be implemented in the improved process so friends i hope this uh, mini training module is helpful people will be able to identify the problem identify the root causes to the problem and then the solutions this way they will be able to resolve their problems from the process so with that i am coming to the end of this video and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends i will see you in the next upcoming video till then take care bye bye